Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be installing Zoom on our Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. So I do want to thank Sebastian, the creator of Box86, that actually made this possible. Now he created this software, which is called Box86, that allows you to run native Linux x86 code on ARM CPU devices, which is like the Raspberry Pi or certain things like that. It also allows it to run near native speeds. Now I've done a couple of videos on this before, which I'll leave a link down in the description or a bubble right up here. But there is a creator by the name of Pi Labs that actually reviews a lot of his work. Anytime where there's like a big succession in his work he will actually do a video about it so i would definitely check out his channel as well they also have a discord if you want to follow along on what's new and what's the latest but that this project gets updated so frequently that by the time i'm making this video this probably updates already that supersedes what i'm doing today so the story begins with me reviewing a little thing called the desk pie the other day and I, one of the things that i was thinking about while i was reviewing this is that how cool it would be to actually get zoom to work on this guy because it could be like a full desktop workstation for the Raspberry Pi. And I'm not the only one. I actually saw a couple of you comment on the bottom asking about Zoom on the Raspberry Pi. So after that, I decided to see if I could get the software to run on Box86. To my surprise, it actually worked. And I actually posted a picture about it onto my community page. I ended up getting a lot of feedback from you guys saying, yes, get this thing to work. So I was like, okay, let me give it a try. So after using it for a little bit, it would constantly crash. So I decided to head over to the GitHub of Box86 to check their issue boards to see if there was anything that I could do to maybe fix it. And found that as of today, nine days ago, he was actually trying to implement this into the Box86. So I was like, oh, cool. Looked down the discussion and found it was uh, not complete because I was still getting errors. So I posted about it. Within 15 minutes, he posted back, got the opcodes working. I tested it again. It went a little bit further, then more errors started to show up. After that, I decided to hop over to his Discord and I was talking to the developer, which is Sebastian. We we're going back and forth with discussion, trying to figure this out. And next thing you know, within the next four to five hours, after fixing all the implementation and the opcodes it needs, yeah, everything was working. Here we are. This is what we are looking at right now which is the zoom meeting on raspberry pi i am actually remoted into it using a vnc console so i could you know use show you my both desktops but yeah everything is working i'm actually able to select either both of my dis uh, camera displays that is on board or the webcam that i have plugged in and as far as the mic goes it's actually pulling from the microphone uh, on my webcam but as far as the output you can choose between the hdmi or headphones uh, chatting and everything works as well as um, share, uh, sharing screen. Well, I can't share unless I allow it. And all the settings that you would need on the Zoom meeting from Raspberry Pi. Now, I, I gotta say, it runs perfectly fine, but it does have, you know, it's a Raspberry Pi. It's gonna struggle a little bit with everything. So it does run a little bit slow. All right, now that I got the settings up, um, you could see that I could actually do virtual backgrounds, which is pretty impressive on its own. I mean, yes, it does, it take a lot of resources and you can see my face over here i have an image that i just popped in and you can see my yeah you can see exactly how it's working out but it's pretty cool that the virtual background is actually working and everything else that you need to adjust the settings with heading over to my main desktop which is actually hosting the meeting you could see i gotta say it is on the low quality right now because i didn't set up the hd but it is working you could actually do a full zoom meeting off raspberry pi so I'm gonna show you guys how to install this and how to get it up and going. All right, so the first thing we need to do, uh, this is my desktop like I was saying before, and this is a VNC viewer of the Raspberry Pi over there. But first thing we need to do is actually download a couple of files, or if you want to, you can compile it yourself. Now, I will leave all the links down in the description below to where Box86 is, as well as their Discord and everything. But if you want to, I would recommend compiling your own version because it constantly gets updated. So yeah, anyway. What I did was compile the source codes and turned it into an installer file, which is a dev file where you could just grab it from my Discord and without having to know how to compile or anything, you can just install it. So once you head over to my Discord and you go over to good stuff, you're gonna see two files here. One is called box86 for Zoom and you can see I compiled it on 9.30, September 30th. And this is a library that it needs to run Zoom 4, which you can also get anywhere. As long as you Google libxcb, Xtest, you'll be able to find the dev file for that to install it. But all we need is this little library, which is the 32-bit version of it. So once you're done downloading these two, 
you could see I actually have it on my desktop right now. I have this one, libxcb, and also box86. Um, and then this is the Zoom file that we need. So to get that, we head over to Zoom and go to that downloads area. So zoom.us support slash downloads. And what we need to select is other Linux OS. And from here, we would choose the architect, which is 32-bit. And then once you hit download, you will actually get this Zoom file. All right, once we're done with getting that Zoom file, we could open this up and extract it anywhere. So I'm gonna extract this over to my desktop, home, pi, desktop. And here we have the Zoom folder. It's gonna do its thing on extracting. While we're waiting for that to happen or while it's working on the background, we would have to install this. What we can do is right click on here and package install. And this will actually install the dev file. Do you want to install this? Yes, hit install and it's going to do its thing. Ask you for your password. And once it's done, it closes. Box86 is installed. Now, once everything is extracted for your Zoom, we're going to need to copy this libxcb over to the main folder here. So I'm going to paste it. And once we're done, you should see it right over here. Uh, we are going to go in here and launch it. Now, because I can't just launch the program, it's not going to work. I will need to pop open a terminal. And since I have it on my desktop, I'm just going to go over to desktop. And then I'm going to change directory over to Zoom. And I'm going to do box 86. You see that? Space Zoom. And there we have it. It's going to load the file. It's going to load the program. And that's all you really need to do to get it to work. And I'm telling you, Sebastian or Box86 made it so simple to get these programs to work. It is amazing. All right, now that we have this going, I'm pretty sure you know what to do next, which we could do is join meeting and pop over your uh, little thing over here because I have another session going on. That's why I have the previous um, saved. But yeah, I could pop over here, hit join. And I need my meeting code. So I'm gonna switch back over to my desktop over here and go to the invite meeting code. And I'm not gonna remember that. So I'm just gonna move this over here. There we have it. We joined the meeting. You could see that I actually have a webcam up. So I'm gonna join with video. And in my main desktop, I would actually have to accept the participant. So let me go over to admit right here. And there we go. The Raspberry Pi is joining the meeting. Give it a second. Like I said, it might run a little bit slow because you are working with a Raspberry Pi, but it works. After once it's up and running, it actually runs pretty good, including the fact of what you're you know, using for this guy. So one thing I did notice, uh, the first thing you would have to do if this is the first time you're running the program, be sure to actually change the video because it might just be a gray screen. You're like, oh, where's my webcam? It, it, the first thing it selects is your onboard video device. It doesn't select a webcam because that's considered video zero and this is considered video one. It's not gonna choose that first. So as soon as you log in for the first time, change your webcam and it should work. And again, you could also change your audio settings as far as the um, mic and the headphones or HDMI output. Uh, you could pop over into chat if you wanted to and uh, chit chat over here if you need. Uh, you could also share the screen. So if I needed to pop, and I have to go over here and as far as security and allow share session, I would share my screen over here and all the functions do work as far as sharing the screen, the desktop, whiteboard, everything. So if I was to share my desktop, I could hit share. And there we have it. This is my desktop forcing the full screen, which is kind of, how do I get rid of it? There you go, double click. So now I see the desktop over here. And let me change that. And you see, sharing your screen. Anyway, there is a lot of software that you could actually use right now today on Box86, like a Steam, 32-bit version of Steam. Um, there's a lot of games that work. Again, check out Pi's Lab because he has a lot of these videos. He even made an operating system around Box86 to get a lot of Windows components to work on Raspberry Pi. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please hit that like button. Another thing I did wanted to include, since I am such a huge fan of this project, 
for the month of October, any proceeds that I get for this video will actually be donated to Sebastian. So please share this video so I can get more people acknowledged into this project so we have more people sharing the news and helping out with everything, finding more problems with this so he could fix it. And then this will be an amazing, amazing software. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.